This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It is Friday, May 17th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Well, District 30A in Annapolis has a new delegate officially. Yes, Delegate Shanika Henson was sworn into her position as the latest member of the Maryland House of Delegates yesterday afternoon. Henson was chosen by the Central Committee for Anne Arundel County Democratic Party and appointed by Governor Larry Hogan to fill the seat of longtime Democratic Speaker Michael Bush, who died last month. Henson did give a nod to Speaker Bush in her brief remarks in front of about a dozen supporters in the House chamber, saying that if he had not opened the doors that he did, I would not be before you today. New House Speaker Adrian Jones administered the oath of office, joking, saying she had to get paid, so she's got to sign the book. Delegates do get paid $50,330 for their three months of work. And while Henson represented Ward 6 in Annapolis, now she represents District 30A, which includes all of the city of Annapolis, the greater Annapolis area, as well as some neighborhoods on the Broadneck Peninsula and in Edgewater. Kind of a terrifying story out of Prince George's County. The body of a missing 14-year-old girl from Anne Arundel County was found Wednesday, and three people, including two MS-13 members, have been arrested in her death. One suspect is still at large. Prince George's County Police and the D.C. Police and federal authorities found the body of 14-year-old Ariana Funas Diaz in a creek near 64th Avenue just west of the Baltimore-Washington Parkway in Riverdale about 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Three people have been arrested. They are Josu Fuentes Ponce, 16, of Bladensburg, Joel Escobar, 17, of Northeast D.C., and Cynthia Hernandez Nucamendi, 14, of Lothian, Maryland. They've all been arrested, charged as adults with first-degree murder. Now, the three of them, as well as the victim, Fuentes Diaz, were involved in a crime in Washington back in April. D.C. police have said that it was a gang-related kidnapping near the Benning Road metro station where they grabbed a man, took him to a nearby house, and threatened and robbed him. Police believe that the group felt that Funes Diaz might have gone to tell the police about the crime, so they grabbed her, they drove her to a wooded area near where the body was found, and attacked her with a baseball bat and a machete, which police say is an MS-13 trademark. Maryland joined four other states in filing charges against the owners and former directors of Purdue Pharma, the maker of the opioid OxyContin, for their role in the epidemic that has led to tens of thousands of deaths nationwide. The company engaged in a pattern of deceptive conduct, encouraging inappropriate use of opioid painkillers, and fueling the opioid crisis, according to a release sent out by Maryland Attorney General Brian Frosch. Meanwhile, the city's own independent suit for $400 million is being considered for dismissal. Ten hospitals in Maryland have received an A grade in hospital safety, according to new ratings released by the LeapFrog Group. There was no Maryland hospital that got an F, but five were given a D, 14 got a C, 11 got a B. For the hospitals that got the A grade, our very own Anne Arundel Medical Center, Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center, the Johns Hopkins Hospital, and Mercy Medical Center. Those last three were all in Baltimore. The B-grade hospitals are MedStar Franklin Square in Baltimore and University of Maryland Baltimore Washington Medical Center in Glen Burnie. Middle of the pack with the C-grades. All of these are up in Baltimore. The Bon Secours Hospital, MedStar Good Samaritan, MedStar Harbor Hospital, MedStar Union Memorial Hospital, Sinai Hospital, and University of Maryland Medical Center. And those that got the D were the Doctors Community Hospital in Lanham, and that is the one that the Anne Arundel Medical Center is in negotiations with for a merger and St. Agnes Hospital in Baltimore. There were several others on the list that were not in our immediate area, so I did leave them off. But good job, Anne Arundel Medical Center. Very proud to have you here, right here in Annapolis. Okay, that does it for the news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. You want to click on that first link in our show notes and find out all the different ways that you can connect with us. If you are someplace you can leave a rating or a review, please do that because that really helps us grow the daily news brief and recommend us to your friends and colleagues if you get a chance. It is Friday. We've got a list of things to do. Of course, we have George Young with your local DMB weather forecast coming up and all of that in just a minute after I tell you a little bit about MacMedics in Severna Park. Have you ever been to the Annapolis Mall when it opens for the day? 
Maybe you've noticed the line of folks waiting to get into the Apple Store. As you may know, I'm a Mac user, and today's episode of the Daily News Brief, in fact, all of the episodes of the Daily News Brief, have been produced right here on my Mac computer. What you might not know about is MacMedics. They were founded here in Annapolis in 1989, and they are an Apple-authorized premium service provider, the only one in the Baltimore, Annapolis, D.C. area. And what that means to you is that they repair all Apple devices, including the iPhone screens and batteries, all without an appointment. And most repairs are done the same day, usually within two hours. They also sell everything except the iPhone and the watch for the same price as Apple. I don't know why you would go anywhere else. Give them a call at 410-757-MACS, or if you're not into the whole letter thing, 410-757-6227. Stop by their retail store in Severna Park on Benfield Road, or their service center in Lanham, right off of Route 50. Or you can always check them out online at macmedics.com. I'll tell you, they've saved me quite a few times, and I know they can save you. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey, everyone. This is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Friday, May 17th. Yesterday turned out great after some AM rain showers, and today looks pretty nice, too, on the whole, with temps climbing up to the upper 70s to lower 80s across all of Anne Arundel County. But there will be a slight risk for PM showers and thunderstorms as a frontal boundary between warm air to the south and still relatively cooler air to the north moves close enough to the area to cause the skies above to become slightly unstable. And that will be the rule all the way through the weekend, which should be a great one with temps upper 70s to mid 80s. But each day does come with a small but valid chance of rain due to that frontal boundary stirring things up. And looking ahead to next week's commissioning week events in and around Annapolis, there could be some lingering showers Monday, but as of today, Tuesday and Wednesday are looking very nice on the whole with sunshine and 70s to near 80. But stay tuned for updates because it's still springtime and things can change in a hurry as low pressure systems and frontal boundaries are still moving around at a pretty quick pace. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great weekend out there. Be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. This is Sarah Koenig, host of the Serial Podcast. I'm coming to Annapolis, to Maryland Hall, on Friday, May 17th, for an onstage conversation about how we created Serial, how we make stories, well, how we make them good, and why they matter. I hope you'll come. For tickets, go to marylandhall.org. I'm Annapolis City Mayor Gavin Buckley. May 17th to the 24th is commissioning week. We have lots of -of out-of-town visitors. There's going to be increased traffic and lots of people who don't know their way around the city. Be patient. Be kind. There will be road closures. Give yourself extra time. This is a big event for these families. And it's such a big part of our identity. The restaurants, the hotels, the shops rely on increased revenue at this time. So thank you for your support. We love this event every year. And let's go Navy. Every weekend, there's something exciting going on in the Annapolis area. Be sure to visit iAnnapolis.net to sign up for a newsletter highlighting all the weekend events. Here are our top picks for this weekend. God, it's Friday. Yes, it is Preakness weekend here in Maryland, the second leg of the Triple Crown. That will happen tomorrow, but let's get started with what's happening here locally in the weekend before we get to that. Tomorrow, it is a national initiative called Kids to Parks Day, and Annapolis is celebrating that here on its own for the first time ever. It goes from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Truxton Park Center right off of Hilltop Road at the Pitt Moyer Rec Center. They are going to join with the national event, Kids to Parks Day. It is organized by the Annapolis Recreation and Parks Department. Activities are going to include bike safety, skateboarding, fishing, stand-up paddleboarding, wild bird introductions, boat exhibitions, crafts. You can pick up a basketball, play flag football. It is free. It is fun and it is for the entire family tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Pitt Moyer Rec Center. And the Preakness, yes, tomorrow the gates open at Pimlico at 8 a.m. Post time for the race is at 6.48 p.m. And the favorite this year is Improbable, which is Bob Baffert's only horse in this year's race. As I said, he's the favorite with 5-2 to two odds and a win for Improbable, who finished fourth in the Kentucky Derby, would be Baffert's eighth victory 
at the Preakness, the second jewel of the Triple Crown. The Derby winner, Country House, who really didn't win the race, is not running due to illness, and Maximum Security, who was disqualified from running the race, is still pissed off and he's not coming either. Under normal circumstances, I would say if you're a betting person, bet on improbable, but hey, with what happened two weeks ago, one never knows. Tomorrow night, a little bit later at 7.30 at the Key Auditorium at St. John's College, it is the finale of the season for the London Town Symphony Orchestra. They will be performing The Planets. It is a concerto. It gets underway at 7.30. Tickets are $20 and $15 for seniors. Students are free. You can get them at londontownsymphonyorchestra.com. And this is one of those little-known orchestras with incredible talent that if you haven't seen, you definitely need to get out there and see them. If you're looking for something a little more risque tomorrow night, a little bit late at night, it's Les Folies Derriere presenting the Peep Show pop-up. This gets underway at 8 p.m., goes to 11 p.m. at the new location of Art Farm Annapolis. Now, they used to be on Inner West Street. Now they are at 111 Chinkapin Round Road in the Arts and Design District. You want to go there? I think this is great. They're billing it as Naptown's only post-Preakness pop-up peep show. And I think they're spot on the money there. It is probably the only one happening there. And the After Hours Burlesque Bazaar will feature local artisans. They will have spirits courtesy of Lion Distilling Company and, of course, the good old-fashioned bump and grind. A $5 suggested donation is requested. And again, this gets underway tomorrow night at 8 p.m. at Art Farm Annapolis at 111 Chinkapin Round Road. On Sunday, one of the most meaningful events you're ever going to want to go to. It is up in Saverna Park at the Saverna Park Tap House. It is Burgers and Bands. This is a suicide awareness event. This is a fantastic event. There are so many people that are dying of suicide in our immediate area that need help, and this is a place to go. Saverna Park Tap House is at 58 Early Heights Road West in Saverna Park. It gets underway at 11 a.m. It is rain or shine. It will have bands all throughout the day that have donated their time playing there. They will have burgers, and everything that you purchase will go to help raise awareness for suicide prevention. It is an event with a purpose, and it's to show people in Saverna Park, in Anne Arundel County, in Annapolis, no matter what your age, that you are not alone. There is help, there is hope, and there are people that will step up, and there are resources. There will be a ton of resources there for suicide prevention, awareness, some local vendors. And again, as I said, there's going to be bands that will be playing throughout the whole day. The weather does look pretty decent. So head on up to Saverna Park on Sunday for burgers and bands. All right, that will wrap it up for the weekend. No matter what you choose to do, please do it safely. We want to see you here on Monday. But beside that, make it a good one. He started to get down on one knee and I saw the ring and I saw him and um. I honestly don't know that I said yes right on the back. She didn't say anything. <laughs> she was just shaking for a little while, and then I think you said yes eventually. Yeah, I guess I, I did. Hope so. <laughs> I'm Steve Samaras of Zachary's Jewelers. That was John and Michelle's story of yes. For a chance to win a beautiful, rare, responsibly sourced, forever marked tribute collection diamond pendant, share your story at astoryofyes.com. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.